Let's also check on the braking performance. Good morning and welcome back to the M3. It is February and it's still pretty cold out. We've had a mild winter, but one thing that's been frustrating me about this car, or about my maintenance on this car, is that I have not replaced these snow tires in a very long time. Now the fronts still have some meat up front, but the rears are toast. They're pretty much bald. Um, and it looks like I, I got these tires used. So A, they're pretty old. I'm not gonna tell you how old because it's embarrassing, but always check the timestamps on your tires. Thanks, Waze. But in my search for new snow tires, I was having some trouble because there's not many selections for these staggered 18s, and or even 19s for that matter. But I run the 18-inch wheel, uh, stock M3 wheel on this car during the winter, and that gives me a little extra sidewall um, to play with. Now, one of the problems with finding snow tires is trying to get the sizes. M3s aren't really snow cars for the most part or as far as the tire world is concerned so when you go onto these websites and you're like hey I want to just get a stock 18 size but with snows you're you're left with like very few options it's almost like when I'm trying to go find tires for my Porsche those 16 inch wheels those Fuchs it's nearly impossible I've got two options so with these I was having the same issue and I was kind of only left with the Michelin Alpine PA4s which are a great tire I'm sure I haven't driven them the problem with that is those are the, pretty much the American performance t snow tire. They get sold out very quickly. So I called Tire Rack and I said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm having a hard time with this. And they, they recommended these Redestein Windtrack Pros. And I said, okay, great, but I'm not seeing my size. They said, we got you. So they sent over these. I've got them in the back. Yes, you can fit four tires. I've, I've fit 275s back here, so I knew I could fit these and now I'm heading down to have them mounted. I'm really excited because snow tires aren't just about snow and this is a green light, dude. I would love it if you'd go. You have a yield sign and you're gonna ignore me and I hate you and you're an asshole. This is called the circle of death for obvious reasons. Um, so we've got these tires back here. I'm really excited because they're new, A. Um, and B, although we haven't gotten that much snow this season, I'm gonna go find it, but it's cold. And that's really the point of a winter tire is not just to be your deep snow safety net. And you know what? Somebody mentioned to me the other day in a comment, they said, have you noticed that no matter when you fill up your washer fluid, it doesn't take very long for it to come back. And now I'm like noticing it all the time. It's cold out and a, a summer tire, even an all season tire, doesn't do so hot when it's below like, you know, a summer tire below 45 degrees and an all season probably not so hot under 20 degrees. They start to get, they, they turn into glass. There's a glass transition temperature to rubber. And what's gonna happen is you get down to this temperature and their adhesion properties start to fail and they become hard and brittle. And a good winter tire is soft and that allows it to maintain grip on, uh, on cold surfaces. I'm like Princess in the P when it comes to tire balancing. So, you know, I've got a little bit of shake in this wheel because, you know, these probably haven't been balanced in five years. So I can't wait to have a nice smooth tire. So let's go get these mounted up and then we're gonna start talking. Got the tires mounted up it's time to do a little night POV now I've put some miles on these already and the first thing I can say is I'm excited that they are balanced very well so thank you to Laren Automotive for that but second is how do these Redestein Windtrack Pros perform and it's it's always tough to put a tire into that winter performance category because what are they performing as are they performing as just a good snow tire or are they reasonable on dry pavement as well? And that's really what I was looking for. So I'm sorry to throw Blizzak under the bus, but Blizzaks have very deep, soft tread. And so I tend to always feel like Blizzaks are like wearing shoes. They're a couple sizes too large. They're phenomenal in deep packed snow. You'll never get stuck in a Blizzak. But when you're just driving along and you've got to still do like four or five months, on a winter tire and a lot of that travel is on dry or wet cold pavement you get bored because now every time you go to turn in you've got to wait for that sidewall and that tread to deflect so the true test of that is just being able to kind of wiggle the car a little bit and is there a big delay between 
turn in and action. So I'm happy to say with these Vernesteins, you know, they're certainly not a summer performance tire, but I turn the car and they're right there with me. So that's great. Another important metric of a winter performance tire is traction. Because yes, they may have good grip in the snow, but on dry or wet, cold pavement, you still want to be able to get out of the hole. And these do a pretty good job. Now I have found that getting on the highway, I have seen the traction control light come on even in third gear. But as you saw right there, yeah, see it, it, it got a little scared when I upshifted. But at the end of the day, I'm still able to use this car. It doesn't have an immense amount of torque because it's just an M3, but it has enough that, you know, it, it, it would be able to break traction if there wasn't enough tire or grip available. When you put on your winter tire, you're already coming down about 10 millimeters because I'm going from a 265 to a 255 in the rear, and I'm in cold weather and I'm re really relying on that soft, compound in order to keep me moving and without just spinning up the tire. So pretty impressed with what these are doing here. This is a cop and he's going to be very curious about why I have a camera on my face. And finally, without being in the snow, how do they perform on cold, damp roads? Because you want to still have lateral grip in your performance snow tire. You don't want to sacrifice everything just because it's the winter months. I'd still like to have fun certainly a little squirmier than a Michelin Pilot 4S, but they work and I can still have fun on the tire. That's not something I could say for winter tires in the past and it's certainly not something I can say for a winter tire on a budget. These are significantly cheaper than a Michelin Alpine P, uh, PA4. So that's pretty exciting that Vernestein's offering a performance snow tire for that, that price point. Let's also check on the braking performance. Well, I guess I had more in the backseat than I thought, but I'm on a track pad. These are uh, getting me down from speed pretty quickly. Oh, another cop. Hopefully I didn't just see my headlights dive. But hey, it's for the sake of science. So thank you, Tire Rack, for uh, offering me these awesome tires. If you are looking for um, performance winter tires for your M3 or any winter tires for your M3 or sports car, especially if you've got like staggered sizes, check out Tire Rack, see what they've got available. And if you don't see the sizes that you want in a tire that you want, just call their customer service. They're so knowledgeable and they'll point you at least in the right direction, if not manage to order you the tires that you were looking for in the first place. And this weekend, I'm gonna be heading up to New Hampshire for a snow cross rally. I don't know what to expect, but God, do I hope the surface is smooth because this M3 is pretty stiff and I don't really wanna blow out my suspension components, but you gotta find some snow for the snow tires. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive.